Well, good evening. Uh, decided to go ahead and do a video. I was going to skip today and uh, just do one tomorrow, but I figured well, I'd go ahead and do one anyway. Um, the last two videos I did was dealing with series, or at least one of them was. It was the Masters of Horror collection, both seasons. And uh, then I did a video dealing with the line of Ghost House Underground films, which is not really a series. It's their full-length films. Um, the... Uh, uh, Masters of Horror is a series, so they were one-hour episodes, which were all very good. The, this one that I want to do is the uh, the Fangoria Fright Fest line, uh, which are still available. I think you can still find them on Amazon for ten dollars and under. Uh, but they were pretty well thought out movies. Um, I know F Fangoria has done quite a few. Um, different series and so on. Uh, they've done some short film uh, contests and so on that they did release on disc. Uh, but Fright Fest from Fangoria did a pretty good job on these and they uh, picked up some pretty weird ideas uh, from some different directors and writers and so on. Uh, the first one I wanted to show you was the film Dark House. This one has Jeffrey Combs in it. It was very well done. Um, he is a haunted house builder who has come up with this idea to create these. Um, oh, I've got to be able to. Uses these. Uh, holographic he's come up with this new holographic idea where the you go into the haunted house and these uh, all of the characters in there are holograms so they look real and you know they look like they're actually there and so on so he chooses this old house and to uh, build his haunted house attraction and uh, he brings in a bunch of students to work with him and um, lo and behold the house is haunted actually by a um, a crazed female who murdered her kids or murdered some kids again this is one of those I haven't seen in so long I don't really remember everything but uh, The house was chosen once as a scene for seven horrible and gruesome murders committed by Janet DeRode, <clears throat> who's played by her. Played really well. Uh, she's really wacko, but anyway, it's a fun movie. It's got a lot of weird gore in it and so on and so forth. But Dark House, first one. This one was uh, directed by Darren Scott. And he also wrote it. Uh, this came out in 2008. The next one is called Fragile. Uh, this is another haunting type film that takes place in an old hospital as if we don't have enough of those but this one's kind of interesting the ghost is uh again it's a closed down hospital and this lady is hired to go in and help clean up the place and organize the records and get stuff ready to move out and so on and so forth and uh the house is or the hospital is haunted by this mechanical type ghost. It's really weird, really strange. Uh, you can kind of see her 
right here. It's just kind of like she's got like mechanical arms and mechanical legs or something along those lines. But it's an interesting, interesting film, and it kind of it keeps you busy. Fragile, a ghost story. And this one was directed by uh, Jami Balcaro. Came out in 2005. Most of these were early 2000s. Some of these I don't really remember too well. I'm going to read the synopsis on this one. This one is called The Haunting. Yeah, it's dark and I don't have a lot of light here, so. A haunting, a place between heaven and hell. Francesca is a young pediatrician traumatized by the loss of her child through crib death. When the family moves to a new home in the country, supposedly to help her recover from the experience, she begins seeing completely inexplicable things. The house in which they now live seems to hide terrible secrets. Both the cellar and the attic are locked and barred to the family, and it is from both of these places that Francesca receives nocturnal visits and slowly drives her mad, driving her mad. Honest to God, I don't even remember this film. I've had these for so long, and it took me forever to find these. I had to painstakingly hunt these down. Most of them were probably from Blockbuster and Amazon at the time was still kind of, because I picked these up when they were first released, so Amazon was still kind of in its beginning stages. This one uh, came out in 2009, so... So a lot of these films came out different, you know, like a few years apart. And then Fangoria Fright Fest picked them up. <clears throat> this next one is called Hunger. This guy is doing a study on a... on a, basically starvation. He starves this woman and wants to see how long it takes for her to succumb. He throws rotten meat or something in there. It, the movie's really hard to watch. Uh, but it's interesting. And it says here, the human body can only survive 30 days without food. And then, five strangers awaken to find themselves trapped in an underground dungeon. They soon realize that they are the subjects of a man's sadistic experiment to test the depths of the human being's will to survive. As the days go by with no means of escape, their hunger increases and their humanity fades away. Yeah, it's pretty rough. It's a weird movie, but definitely worth a check out. And this came out in 2009 as well. This next one is called Roadkill. I think it was also called Road Train or something like that. It's an Australian film, uh, basically a truck, kind of like Joyride or, uh, you know, kind of along those lines, or even the St Steven, Steven Spielberg film Duel. Um, 
ton of Australian truckers going after some people here. I don't know much about this either, but uh, this came out in 2009, so a lot of these came out at the same time. There's been a few movies called Roadkill. I know the uh, Maneater series did a Roadkill also uh, that was dealing with killer vultures or something like that. It's kind of a sci-fi channel type thing. But this is dealing with a trucker going after people. And this is made in Australia. This was a blockbuster pickup. Tomb. This was my least favorite of the of the series of films that they put out for Fright Fest, for Fangoria Fright Fest. I don't really remember much about it, but it might be okay. It got good. Uh, I looked it up a little while ago, and it did get good reviews, so maybe I need to revisit it and check it out once again. The last two are probably my favorites of the of the series. Grim Love. This movie is rough. And it's based on an actual event that happened in uh, the early 2000s in Germany. Uh, it's a cannibal film with a twist. Um, you don't really hear about it too much, surprisingly. Um... Uh, but this movie is about this woman who, uh, she's a, she's involved in a, uh, she's a criminal psychologist, or studying to be a criminal psychologist, and she's drawn to this bizarre murder case. They changed the names in this, the guy's real name, I forget it right now, right offhand, but he's still in prison. He basically, what he did is he gets on the computer and gets on the internet in some chat room and he uh, is looking for somebody who's willing to be eaten. And uh, really bizarre. So he uh, runs around town and uh, finds a few people out on the street and then when they find out what they're really there, when he takes them home, when, he, when they find out what they're really there for, which is to be devoured, alive, basically, willingly. And so this is a, you know, this is a, a movie that deals with homosexuality. So it, um, so it's kind of, this guy gets sexual pleasure off of finding somebody who's willing to be cannibalized <laughs> and uh, just bizarre anyway when these when the people that he finds on the street determine that the, you know what what they find out what they're there for they of course run for the hills he finally finds a guy on the online who's willing to do it and uh, he's basically this kind of humble suicidal guy who finds it kind of fascinating that you know so he uh he gets eaten and uh the whole thing was filmed so this student finds the film she does some research in a library or something and finds the film and of course the film is locked away with the police in germany but uh it does exist where it actually shows him devouring this guy alive. I mean, he literally eats his private parts and feeds them to him and cooks him, cooks the guy while he's still alive. Oh, it's just a, the movie's really, it's, it's really creepy. But, and to think that it was based on something that had actually happens, you know, happened. And the guy's still in prison. He's, 
got life in prison in Germany. This happened in the... I want to say... It was the first... Like 2003 or something like that. Obviously the internet was going quite strong, so... It was well into the early 2000s. But a lot of people haven't heard about... <clears throat> haven't heard about that actual case but anyway it is uh, loosely I shouldn't say loosely it, they follow the events of the actual case pretty close but they change the names and I think the <clears throat> the circumstances with this gal finding the tape and so on uh, didn't actually happen but makes a good story so technically you're watching the video of she, what she's watching. <clears throat> so it's pretty good. The next one uh, is Pig Hunt. And uh, this is pretty good, of course. It's dealing with a giant boar. And uh, there's a lot going on in this movie. There's a group of hunters are kind of like amateur hunters that are out hunting down this boar and the boar is called uh, supposed to be this 3,000 pound man-eating wild boar um, but anyway so anyway there's this uh, group of amateur hunters that are out looking for this 3,000 pound man-eating boar, I guess. And uh, they, then there's a, a group of hillbillies that they run into. And then there's a group or a cult of all women who worship the boar that they run into. So, I mean, there's all these different scenarios going on at the same time. But it's really well done. And it it's got a lot of gore and a lot of interesting acting and the boar isn't too bad I think it's a little bit better than Razorback uh, they didn't even show that the boar too much in that film of course that was in the 80s I believe or 90s I can't remember exactly but, but this is good there's just a lot of weird shit going on. There's just a lot of scenarios and a lot of people involved. A lot of groups involved here. And that is the conclusion of the Fright Fest. Um, Fangoria Fright Fest collection. I believe that's all of them. And I think they're all still available. You can still get them. Um... Most of them at the time, I think when I picked them up, Amazon really wasn't going. They were still kind of selling books and stuff. and uh, Movies were there, but it wasn't, you know, because I know Amazon kind of ran into some issues like around 2011 where I think they actually almost went bankrupt or did go bankrupt. I'm not sure which it was. I know Jeff Bezos was struggling in that area but anyway before it, it came back strong but I, I looked up some of these films and they are on some of them are on Amazon so for cheap and you can get them for like 10 bucks but they're well well done movies and there's some special features with you know there's commentary and um, some trailers I think they go through some of the Fright Fest um, trailers so that you can you know you can choose what movies you want to get anyway that's all I had for today uh, we'll do some more I wanted to do the 8 films to die for seasons 1 through 3 and then um, I do have some of the uh, After Dark that was done by After Dark and then the After Dark Originals, uh, which was basically the kind of sort of the fourth season, I think. Uh, which they did come in a box set for a while, and then 
uh, they came in box sets, seasons one, two, and three. Four, I think they released them all separately, so you just had to hunt them down. But unfortunately, a lot of them I just hunted down, so. But I will do those. That'll take a long time, because there's quite a few films involved in that. And a lot of them I don't even remember. I haven't seen them in so long, but there's a few that were that stand out that were pretty good. But anyway, uh, keep in mind to hit the like and the subscribe. I'm still very new. This is season, or this is uh, episode number three. I did two episodes yesterday uh, dealing with uh, the Masters of Horror and then also the uh, Ghost House Underground series, or I should say the Ghost House Underground uh, line of films. And uh, then, I, then I'm doing this one with the Fright Fest from Fangoria. And Fangoria did, like I said, they've done some other things too, but <clears throat> they weren't really as, they weren't like full films like this. I mean, they were doing a lot of contests with like short, short films and um, some were better than others, but I do have those. I need to hunt them down, but they're somewhere in my collection. All right, guys. Um, I may choose to pull something out and do another episode here tonight. We'll see. We're kind of having a late dinner, so uh, I may uh, the coffee may kick in here, and I may decide to do another one. All right. Well, subscribe, hit the like button, check me out over on Facebook at the Horror Experience Group under groups. We're trying to get that going again. I've been back in there today. I just kind of went in there to see what was going on and there's still a lot of posting going on but not a lot of activity i think um groups for the most part in facebook have kind of are kind of fizzling you know i don't, I don't know it's just not enough to do or what I, i'm not sure what the problem is but i think you can still do live videos and things like that in the groups but um also you can uh uh, do a chat room kind of a thing which is nothing new but necessarily alright guys we'll talk at you soon and um, have a good night I may be back for another one alright later <laughs>